And I'm going to mm -hmm. post the uh, sign in link again because those who joined after I posted it can't see see it. Yep. So. yep. Good morning, everybody. It is 10.02. I'm going to call the August ESINET users group meeting to order. Um, as a reminder, please sign in. Uh, Jennifer has put a link in the chat. Uh, so please click on that and sign in so we get uh, good attendance. Um, and I think uh, we're ready to get going. So let's start with the uh, CenturyLink uh, or slash Lumen System Performance Reports. And I believe I saw Tracy. Yes, ma'am. How are you? Okay, good. How are you? I'm doing excellent. Thank you. Yep. Good morning, everyone. Um, all right. That first graph is our test completion codes. Uh, as a reminder, this is showing the uh, overall network performance July 1st until July 31st, um, where each probe is supposed to be pinging each location every seven seconds. And everything on this top chart um, is in compliance with what we need it to be. So we're happy to see that. Good news as well on the next one. Um, this ranks the voice quality of our calls being tested. We would never want to see anything in the one, two area, of course. Uh, again, seeing everything top off right over number four is above where we expect to see it um, at, based on the tariff. So again, good news there. The next graph is just gonna show uh, information. This time we're doing it by ECMC routes. Um, again, the higher the number, the better, uh, one being bad. So excellent work on that one. For the packet loss percentage, um, I think the ECMC route comes first. Yeah, there it is. Uh, less than or equal to 0.5% is what we are looking for on this one. And then let's see, the next one tariff wise, um, remember that our measurements, um, it should be less or equal to 20 milliseconds. We do the measurement on microseconds, otherwise we wouldn't get to see anything on this lovely chart here. So um, again, everything looking like it's falling within the requirements of the tariff for the data pools this month. All right. Is that the end of those? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I just had a, a quick question, and Andrew uh, may be able to um, speak to this as well. I just was going back to the issues that Arapahoe County um, agencies experienced um, between, I think it was June 13th and July 3rd. And I realize that this is statewide. So, I mean, we had some significant um, audio quality issues, and I just didn't know if that would show up in one of these reports. Um, I'm just curious because, I mean, it, it, it affected, well, yeah, six agencies. So I was just wondering if that, that would show up in something here or because it was such a small amount of agencies versus statewide, we really wouldn't see it. And you said it was Arapahoe County, Kathy? Yeah, it was the, well, it was the Arapahoe County Authority Agency. So it was five law enforcement agencies and one fire. It did not include Aurora. Five law, one fire. And Andrew, did you, um, I think it was, you, you said June 13th to July 3rd. Do you know, Andrew, if there was an incident? Open? Yeah, yeah, there, there were, <laughs> there were multiple. <laughs> um, so we, we found and corrected multiple issues um, in the network. Um, you know, I just don't know if you'd really see it here, Kathy, because, um, you know, it, it was an intermittent issue. So there weren't, um, there weren't, um, like multiple long duration periods where service was completely down, you know, it was kind of, you, there, there were, yes, there were definite call quality um, issues. And, you know, it, it took us some time to um, 
uh, isolate and dispatch and, you know, uh, on, on one of the particular issues, you know, like three different times, um, it seems like we fixed it in the same place. Um, but I, I don't know, you know, that, that that would show up here um, because, you know, number one, calls were still going through, even though the quality of the call uh, was not great um, all the time. And there wasn't a lot of hard down. Um, so I think that's, that might be, you know, um, something that doesn't quite show on uh, Tracy's report. Okay. I'm curious. I didn't know if there was some place um, where you, you know, Luma and, you know, you guys would actually see that other than the us reporting the problem. Um, and and I think the the answer to that is uh, yeah. Um, Kevin, uh, well, one of our engineers, you know, when when I gave him a time frame, uh, he was um, you know able to to go back and um, you know look and you know at real time um, or you know it, it's almost better you know when we have a a period of recent time you know, to help kind of isolate and um, push us to uh, where, you know, the next uh, next step would be. Okay, thanks. Daryl, go ahead. Can you go back to the uh, MOS report? So, and, and Andrew, to your point, it wasn't down calls, but um, the MOS, my understanding of MOS, it stands for mean opinion score, is that it is a measure of the quality of the call. And it really seems that the type of issues that Kathy was describing should have an impact on the call quality. And I don't know how that's measured. I don't know what your system looks at to determine the MOS score. I don't know if you can speak to that at all and, and why that why those types of staticky lines or call quality issues aren't showing up on this chart. I can speak a little bit to this is Jeff Winkleman. From my understanding for the MOS, <clears throat> excuse me, the MOS score, the probes that we have at each of the locations will do testing. And I don't know what that standard is as far as how many per minute. Um, I don't know if Andrew or Tracy have that detail, but it will actually go out and test the line itself for the quality of that. Do you think there's any way we could find out what it is looking at to test the quality? My understanding is it actually does a test call through the network. Okay. Daryl, I can look to, um, this is just an automated report that is sent to me each month, but we might be able to, um, I, I can work with the Splunk team and see if we can go in and look at specifically the Arapahoe County, Arapahoe County PSAPs during that time. We might be able to get, you know, drill down a little bit more. This is just standardized, you know, based on the requirements of the tariff to supply it. Um, sure. But I know that the tool itself does more. We just need to go in and ask for it to be done. Um, but you said it's one fire and five law offices. Andrew or Kathy, do you guys have those called out individually? And I can see what we can find. Yeah, I can I can send that to you. I can send you what agencies they are. Okay. I mean, I'm not 100% sure other than, you know, other than this being sent to me monthly, I don't know exactly what the tool can pull, but I have used it before um, with other companies, and I know there's, there's more that you can get from it. Okay. I was just curious because um, it was a, it was a significant issue, and I, I was just wondering where it would show up in, you know, in what report. And like I said, I didn't know if it didn't show up here because this is, you know, gathering so much information that it would consider that a small amount and you really wouldn't see it. But it would be interesting to know um, or to see where that would show up in one of the reports or even in this system. Okay. Yeah, let me, let yeah. me do some digging. And I'm, I would really like to know about that as well because, um, you know, the way Kathy has described it, I haven't heard any recordings of the calls, but the way Kathy has described it, some of the calls were difficult to even process because the static was so bad. And if 
that type of that level of degradation isn't being caught by whatever test is being used to determine the uh, the MOS, then that kind of leaves me questioning what the you know what would catch it. What what is the what is the MOS really telling us if it's not catching that? So I would be interested to know if um, if there's anything in in your data collection that shows that that was a problem during that time period. Okay. Yeah, give me give me a couple of days. Like I said, I'm not 100% familiar with where to find it, but I have folks here that can help me. Very good. Thank you. Sure. Thanks. I appreciate that. Okay. I think we can move forward, Jennifer. Unless anybody else has any questions on that report. There you go. You 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 beat me to it, Kathy. <laughs> I was like, I might have to pull up my copy. My eyes aren't that good this morning. Okay, um, guys, I went ahead and added a couple new items to this tracker, um, just so that we can keep track of everything. Uh, the top one there is I plugged in an update on eCats. Um, as we all know, this is based on the a tariff from last year. Um, I have a meeting with Entrato tomorrow. Um, because they've kind of cycled through some program managers and we have a new contact that we're going to be working with. Uh, but we do still have a handful of PSAPs um, left. I have a list of them from Entrato um, where we're still trying to get the IP information and the worksheet returned to us. Um, I know that, you know, the billing has started for all PSAPs, but we're still doing our very best to um, get this established for everyone. There's a couple constraints with CPE needing to be upgraded. And I know several PSAPs are working with Motorola to do that. So our goal really is to get everyone that is still needing ECATS launched um, taken care of in the next couple of months. Because this is a project that we all know started over a year ago. So I think everybody's anxious to just get it taken care of and rolled out. Um, I'm going to be sending an email to the PSAPs that are left. Uh, I'll include the two forms that Entrato needs as well as phone numbers for both myself and Entrato. Um, that way we can work kind of to get these scheduled when it's convenient for the PSAPs. But we're getting a lot closer. Sounds um, good. Do you have a like a projected completion date at all? Well, we originally we wanted to be complete June of this year. Um, okay. But it's it's a matter of getting the paperwork back from those that are left. Right. And then Entrato has to schedule, you know, we'll ship the equipment out. Entrato is scheduling the installation along with the Lumitex. Um, once we, I, it's gone pretty quickly once we get the information. I mean, Entrato is scheduling, you know, weekly. We have turnups going on and we have training taking place. Ideally not, past the end of this year, but um, again, it's kind of somewhat out of our control until we get all the information back. Sounds good. Um, I'm sure she is, but I didn't look for Kimberly. Um, I went ahead and put this on here. We all probably know um, the Letta move that's taking place. Um, she's working with myself and Jeff on this one just to uh, make sure that we're ready to roll. I think November or December was the date that I had down. Um, and maybe Kimberly is not on today. Um, but I just plugged that on here because it's going to be a fairly good sized project for everyone. And Jeff and I are working with our team um, to get updates to Kimberly. And Tracy, this is Tracy. Uh, yeah, Kimberly is not able to join today, but I'll make sure she knows to get back to you if that November, December timeframe needs to be adjusted. Okay, perfect. And Tracy, this is Jeff Winkleman. As soon as I get additional status as far as what's going to be needed on the network build side um, and anything else on that, I will go ahead and reach out and let you guys know. Fantastic. Unfortunately, I don't have any additional status on that piece. Um, there's some internal back and forth that we're working on, and I think we have forward movement on that. So as soon as I get an update on that, I'll let you guys know. Great. Thank you. She always gives us information early in advance, so we have time. And it's greatly appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, as we all know, some things take a while. Yep. Um, uh, next one still on here is the Pitkin Vale call routing. Um, everyone's aware this is kind of the PSAP 
CPE vendor, Lumen and Infrato. Um, I do continue to hold monthly meetings where all stakeholders are invited. Uh, last update I had is that there was still some communication taking place um, with the PSAP and Motorola around new CPE. So uh, we were told that until that's in place and decided upon, we're kind of at a standstill between Lumen and Entrato. Uh, but again, we are still holding those monthly meetings. Um, the next one is actually tomorrow. So hopefully we'll have some updates. Okay, well, I, I do see that Brett is on. And Brett, do you have an update on that at all? Nope, not a word from anybody. Okay. Um, and again, like I said, tomorrow afternoon there is a call. So hopefully we get enough folks on where we can get an update. Um, and we'll we'll populate it here and make sure this group knows as soon as we know. Okay. Sounds good. Um, the last one has been on here for a while, and I know there's conversations taking place outside of my team at Lumen, and this is just the ability to transfer 911 calls across state lines. Um, New Mexico has been engaged with our folks here, but it really hasn't been um, finalized or anything decided at a project level that would push this to like Andrew and Jeff and I being involved. I just keep asking for updates and I'm told they're working on it. So I think it's a long term project, right? New Mexico just seems to be making the most noise. So I have a feeling that might be the first one to go. Um, but we do still have that on here. I don't want to lose sight of it. And I know there's several other little projects going on, but these were kind of the main four that were you know, taking the most work and wanting to stay on top of. So if you guys have anything else that you ever think should be added to this, you know, either bring it up to this meeting or feel free to shoot me an email. Will do. Jennifer, go ahead. Thanks, Kathy. And Tracy, I was actually gonna ask, could you please add the camera trunks issue to the tracker? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right. Anybody have any questions on those? If not, we'll move back to the um, agenda. And it is Shauna on. If Shauna's not here, she asked me to speak on her behalf. She said she was going to be uh, working consoles and might not be okay. able to make the meeting. Okay. Yeah, I do not show her on, so go ahead, Jennifer. Okay. Um, so I'm going to pull up, hold on just a second. I'm just going to pull up emails uh, between Pueblo and um, letting us know of this problem. Um, so on, I'm just going to pick the, look up the date here. Uh, roughly July 29th or July 28th, um, Pueblo Police Department had a uh, PSAP service disruption notification uh, that said that they might have a disruption and then they had a follow-up and final notification that stated that the PSAP was not affected. Um, but Pueblo Police Department, or Pueblo County, sorry about that, this is Pueblo County, um, contacted us and said that the PSAP was affected, that they had a call go to their backup um, that should have gone to Pueblo County, and that call dropped. And then they got a second 911 call, um, and when they tried to transfer that call back to Pueblo County, it just rang on Pueblo PD's end and nothing rang at the center that was supposed to get the original call. Um, they got an automated message from Lumen that said they were experiencing a network event. And then they uh, got that follow-up that said that there was no trouble found and 911 wasn't working correctly. So uh, Pueblo County reached out to Lumen and asked for clarification on what happened. And um, she said that they escalated to Jeff and Andrew on July 30th. Andrew uh, replied back that day and she followed up and said he would get look into it. Uh, Shauna followed back up on August 5th 
um, and they still haven't heard anything back from Lumen about what happened. So Andrew's on the call. Andrew, have you had a chance to look into this and can you clarify what happened? Yeah, here's what I was able to find. And, and I apologize, I was out of the office for a period of time too. Um, but uh, I just, I worked with our PSAP and the managers over there and um, got this uh, uh, information back. Um, uh, so they said um, they were able to find the calls in the CDR. Uh, these calls attempted to reach the Pueblo County and timed out. So it routed to Pueblo PD. Um, they can see where the first call went into the PSAP call queue, indicating the PSAP was busy at the time. The second uh, call tried twice to route um, to uh, SO and timed out two times, receiving a 408 zip code. Um, we don't, you know, uh, know the reason the PSAP was not able to answer, um, but that's that's what we saw on those calls. And what happened when they tried to transfer back? So the PD tried to transfer the call that they got back to the SO and it just rang on their end and wasn't able to connect? That's what, that's what, yeah, that's what they're saying. Um, they were able to see for that uh, time. Um, hang on, I've got one, one more little tidbit. Um, it says when the, uh, 911 knock called the PSAP, they indicated no issues, um, but they were also unaware that a call had routed to their backup until um, the Lumen 911 knock advised of that. Uh, and, you know, the PSAP said, you know, that they were receiving calls normally. Okay, but the Pueblo County said that the PD received a second call and when they tried to transfer it back to the SO, it just rang and rang and would not connect back to the SO. Do you know what happened? Um, let's see. I think that, I think, you know, based off the information I sent them, they, they lumped that in with the information um, where the PSAP was busy at the time. That's why. So then it routed. It wouldn't. Yeah. All right. Well, that was 10 minutes later. So was are you saying that the PSAP was still busy and that's why the PD couldn't transfer that back to the SO because they were still busy? Yes, that, that's what the 911 knock was seeing you know, based off of the call information and, you know, what we were able to track or are able to track. Okay, Matt had his hand up, but I have a little bit more follow-up after Matt. Go ahead, Matt. This timeout timer, is that the setting for the Peace app, say in their Intrato user portal, where they can log in and see that timeout timer, um, <clears throat> or was that a CPE-driven timeout? Because at one time, when we first initiated EziNet service, everyone had uh, rather short timeout timers, and I believe this group voted or developed consensus to extend that timeout timer, but. I'm wondering if we all should be looking at what our EziNet timeout times are, but also if we have a CPE timeout signal. Anybody have any idea on that or do we need to look into that and see? I, I think we would, uh, you know, from the Lumen perspective, I, I can't speak to that. I came in um, after EziNet was set up, so I am not uh, completely familiar with, 
you know, some of those things that happened and um, I have not uh, dealt with or been asked about uh, a timer like that before. So I'd have to check with some folks on my side. Also, we've been having the same issues here. Alex, would you like to speak briefly about that? Yeah, we sat in on a call with uh, Andrew and Chris Stewart out of Delta and Amber Lillard at Westco. They were kind of talking about some odd oddness between stuff going to Westco or Delta, vice versa, when it seemed like it should have been going, you know, as the primary route to Delta, but it was hitting Westco. When I was looking in the CDR, I was seeing that same 408 timeout uh, for those calls that had tried to hit Delta, but timed out. Um, I even saw one that had like a double ring at Delta, a VoIP call that like did a 30 second timeout, tried to ring in again at Delta for some reason, and then did another 408 timeout and then went to Westco. But I believe at this time, and, and maybe Amber could clarify, but I, I believe Delta was saying, Chris was saying that they weren't busy at those times. But um, so we were just kind of wondering what is generating that 408 timeout, like what specifically the nature of that is, so we can understand what's happening at that PSAP and why it's transferring over and make more sense of the whole situation. Especially when the PSAP says they were not busy. They right? were busy, yeah. So Matt, this is Tracy. Um, I don't know 100% what each individual PSAP can see within their entrottled portal, because you guys have a different view than we do. But I can definitely find out what those timers are set at. I mean, we can, and, and sure. I, I think I think you guys can see that, but I can confirm uh, with Kim Haig what they're set out for a particular location. Okay. Tracy. I, just tell me which ones you want me to check. I was just gonna say that we, at one point, I remember we used to be able to see that in the Entrato user portal. Mm -hmm. And as of looking last week, uh, we can no longer see see what that timeout is set to. I remember being able to see it before, but I can't find it anywhere in the user customer manager, customer management portal anymore. Okay. So let me check with um, both Rich Johnson and Kim Haig and see, you know, it, if you can't see it anymore, why, or maybe it's moved to a different location and we just don't know what we're looking for. Um, yeah. But if you guys want to shoot me over which piece of locations you want me to check the timing for, I can get with Entrato and do that. Can we give you a list of, um, what is it, 84 piece apps? <laughs> you, you know what? They might be able to pull something statewide to see what it's set at. Um, I think that would be good for this group. Let me just, um, yeah, take it. Because when we started, I think that the default set, EZNet setting, EZNet base time was 30 seconds. And we were having lots of these sort of initially unexplained rollovers that turned out to be because of those. And I, I think the EZNet users group collectively said change it to 60 seconds or 120 seconds um lori's got her hand up maybe she remembers what that was yeah lori go ahead okay and and i don't have any idea on the timeout but i do know that i'm having trouble with one specific voice phone in dolores that um excuse me voice over ip phone that every every single time they try to call 911, even when none of our lines are lit up, it rings and rings and rings and then transfers to Durango. Durango then has to transfer it back to us on an admin line. And and it's an elderly couple that tend to call frequently. And I've called the VoIP company and Lumens trying to get this figured out. And so far, I, I haven't got any answers because our PSAP is sitting here with nothing going on. And our 911 call, at least from that address, is going direct to Durango and never even rings in Cortez. Alexander, go ahead. Alexander, are you trying to talk? 
Yeah, sorry about okay. that. I was muted. I was saying in uh, as an anecdote to what Lori was saying, of all the calls that I was seeing that Delta and, and Wesco were having this issue, they were also specifically VoIP calls. I haven't seen uh, landline or wireless pop up in this way. Kathy had to move her computer for a minute, so she asked me to jump in. Uh, Cindy Berry has asked in the chat, have we asked and tried to validate the routing on that telephone number? And I have not. I'm not sure who to even contact at this point. I did send it through um, through the MSAG detail information and haven't heard anything back. So maybe that's a place to start, Andrew and Tracy, working with Entrato on validating that telephone number on that particular one. And then Jackie's got her hand up. I do. I'm doing the MSAG for Durango and have not received that. Would you mind forwarding me that address and telephone number? And I could see what I could do on my end. I can do that. Yeah. Thank you. And if you can, yeah, CC me um, with any information you have on that. <clears throat> this is Andrew Freebert. Um, okay. Jackie and Andrew, can you throw your emails in the chat? So Lori's got it right there. Yes. Jennifer, did you see Cindy's follow-up message? Yeah, uh, saying that VoIP might have a temp route if the VoIP provider hasn't finished provisioning the user. Although if Lori contacted the VoIP provider on the caller's behalf, I would hope that that's been done. But I agree, that's a good point. Any other um, conversation on specifically the VoIP issue? And I would say that, um, you know, Delta County receives a unusually high number of potential PSAP disruption notifications and then uh, that clear um, shortly after. So I'm glad that they're working with you, Matt and Alex uh, and Andrew on addressing that. And and just this is Lori again, and just to follow up more on this number that called at the so when it gets transferred to Durango, Lumen sends out that automatic notification that says our nine one one lines are down or something to that um, disruption notification, and then within just minutes there, we received that it what didn't impact us. So you've seen a direct tie between those notifications and this particular phone number calling? Yes. Interesting. Yeah, any any uh, timeline when you send that along with, uh, you know, the notification ticket number or something um, would... Uh, and that, you know, I, I can look that stuff up too, but you know, anything you have um, that uh, could help check. dig into it a little bit um, would be great. Okay. Any other info or conversation on that particular issue? So going back to Pueblo specifically, um, it's concerning that they had that happen, but it's also concerning that they have had to push for information back from CenturyLink. And so uh, I don't know if this is gonna be discussed later on this call or not, but I would encourage again, uh, the CenturyLink team to be responsive to the PSAPs when they are asking for information. And I think Kathy's back. I am, thank you, sorry everybody. Yeah, and, and I'll also check on, on that 408 code, you know, I don't know if that's just kind of, uh, you know, binary or, or black and white to us, like that's the code and we can't see or tell anything more past that or, you know, if there's any other type 
of information you know we can glean from that i'll i'll ask that too all right that sounds good andrew any other conversation about this right now and then they'll have follow-up after Jennifer. Can we add VoIP routing to the tracking issues list, please, Tracy? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. OK. I think we can move on to the next item, which is the camera trunks issue. I'm hoping I didn't miss that. Did we already discuss that or no? No, we haven't yet. Okay, thanks. I just wanted to make sure that wasn't one and the same. So this is going to be, um, is this going to be Jeff or Tracy? I'm not sure, or Andrew? When you speak to the camera trunks issue, is that the, with the dialability? I believe that's what this particular agenda item is about. Yes. Which I remember right in the last time we spoke about this, it was um, we have the ability to make those non dialable. And I think we were looking to find out if that's something we wanted to do across the board, if it's going to be individually. Um, it's, that was my understanding. Tracy or Andrew, do you remember anything different from that? I think it was going to be dependent on each piece app. I know a couple of weeks ago I submitted the request for Leta to make Leta to make them non-dialable. Um, it was right after or right before all those fires took place up in Kimberly's area. And at the time we had agreed to leave one dialable number open, I believe. And there were still so many calls coming in on that one line that Kimberly requested that we just make all of them uh, non-dialable. I haven't received a, a request um, from anyone else, just from her PSAPs. Okay, Tracy, would you be able to share that form? Because um, I don't know if that has been sent out yeah. to anybody. Yeah, so. it's, and it's actually just an email. It, it's not really a okay. form, but we just have to make sure that each individual PSAP that makes this request um, kind of realizes realizes what it means, right? Because there's there's pros and cons, and we've done this in other states. Um, and a lot of times we've had to go back and make them dialable again. So I think that's one thing we don't want to do is we don't want to turn them off, turn them back on type of thing. Um, so it's basically just acknowledging from the PSAP level what this means. Because we have no way of knowing who might be calling those numbers. It, it most of the time probably is telemarketers and noise but it also could be someone truly needing to get through. And we, we have no way on our side of knowing that. So this is Jennifer. And at the last meeting, we had asked for a list of uh, TNs to be compiled for each comm center so that they could evaluate and test before they asked for those to be removed. We had also talked about making sure that uh, we did some testing before they get uh, disconnected so that we aren't um affecting something in the call routing process and matt has his hand up my my guess is that he's got something along those lines to say as well uh just similar we had discussions with uh jeff winkleman and kevin newton about this and you know what are the what are the potential side effects of it and in, in at least in our case it it mostly came down to using those dns we're testing upgraded or new CHE in the piece app. Um, and sure that th they can be turned off, so to speak, uh, eliminated. It's possible they could be recreated in the future, but it would be a multi-week process that you would have to prepare for in advance. An alternative workaround was that you know, all we need it for is is testing CHE in that situation. Um, we could just simply use other phone lines. So we're leaning towards uh, doing away with them. But um, we, we've also, you know, had discussions with 
CenturyLink about what are our DNs. And um, after we receive those, we seem to have discovered another DN that CenturyLink may not have known about. I think it is, it is important that we get that list for all the PSAPs. Go ahead, Alex. Yeah, just to tack on to what Matt was saying too with ours, another reason that we recently discovered and would need that list is in getting with Intrado about um, direct trunk dial code coming through Alley. Um, we got a list from Intrado of potential of the DNs they have on record for us. And they mentioned to us that that list would need to be updated so that the direct trunk dial any code could be applied to calls where people directly dialed that and it would come in as 911 because we got we discovered this one um, as a missed dial came in as a record not found so our natural method is to report, report a discrepancy and through that process we discovered this and uh, we weren't aware that the customer needed to update Intrado with this list of our direct numbers so that that code could be applied that seems to us like maybe it would be something in the upgrade process as those DNs were changed or created at, at up, upgrade point that we had last year, but uh, it seems to have not happened and we're trying to figure out what those DNs are so we can update that with Intrado and that code can be properly applied and we can solve another issue we have in the West End related to direct Trump dials. All right, thank you for that information. Tracy, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to follow up. I, I was not at this meeting last month. So you said that you requested a list of all of the TNs like for the state that are still being, that are dialable. I'm just trying to clarify what the ask was last month so I can follow up on it. If I recall correctly, and Jennifer, correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, that's what we asked for so that we could do testing. Okay. And I mean the DNs associated with the camera trunks. Right. Yes. Let me see if I can pull it out for you guys. I, I apologize. I didn't know that was an action on this. State. Thank you. This is Alex again. At least on behalf of us, we, uh, last year we had requested um, in researching an issue directly with uh, Lumen for our DNs. I don't know about the whole group if, when that was requested. Okay. I'll get them. Thanks, Tracy. Any other conversation about that? Okay, hearing none, I will move on. Uh, the next item is the presentation on the new tariff filing. And I wasn't sure, is this going to be Jeff or Tim? I'm not sure who's going to speak. Well, this Tim, I can speak, uh, but there isn't much to speak to. We're just still working on it. Um, I'm not sure of the time timing to filed because there's still some conversations that need to be had but we will address this in our comments next week in the surcharge proceedings so that at least it's um, on the uh, radar of the commission i don't have any other updates at this time okay any questions from anybody for tim I, excuse me, I would throw out is, is, I guess the question is, is everybody aware of what that was regards to? This was talking, uh, when we originally, um, CenturyLink was, is going to file a new tariff for text to 911 and other features proposed on the ESINET. And we had targeted this meeting to uh, do an updated presentation on that. But it sounds like, uh, based on what Tim just said, that we weren't ready yet, and so we'll push that to the next one. Right. I just I know there have been quite a few different things going through regarding the tariff. I just wanted to make sure our people understood that that was what we were talking to specifically. Great. 
Yep, thank you. Uh, we already went through the ECATS implementation progress report. Um, and uh, Jennifer has this as a reminder for those that are purchasing the new CPE, please ask whether the solution will interface with ECATS. Um, we just want to keep saying that as a reminder to everybody um, as they're moving forward with that. I know we're getting down to just a few of the PSAPs or ECCs left. Um, we already talked about the date that we hope the implementation is going to be completed. We don't really have a set date, but hopefully it's going to be um, hopefully it's going to be before the end of this year, maybe before the end of September. Fingers crossed. And the next thing I have is a follow up on a discussion that occurred at the prepaid collections committee meeting, which was yesterday. Um, there was discussion about uh, a traffic study um, and there was actually a long discussion about it. Uh, I think uh, from I think what we need to do and what we talked about yesterday is we need to request the traffic study from uh, CenturyLink. Um, but I think before we do that, we need to determine exactly what information we would like to see as the as the ECCs. Um, and I think in order to do that, we need to have a group of people, um, not wanting to use the committee word, but um, we need to have a group of people who would be interested in meeting and uh, determining exactly what that, that information would be. Um, so I was going to reach out to um, those in this group um, and see if anybody would be interested in being part of that. And Joe, you've raised your hand. Go right ahead. Yeah, this was, uh, as I understood, to, for us to right size the number of concurrent sessions that are subscribed to. And in order to make sure we're getting the information we need, rather than saying traffic report to identify the data points you know, the specific data that um, would be useful for making that determination, you know, for the analysis of how many concurrent sessions a, a piece that might require. Okay. So in regards to then, Joe, I'll just ask you, because I know you were on the call yesterday, in regards to that, um what type of information do you think um would be needed for us to see that uh, i'm not involved in peace op operations so i don't have any idea I, my okay. my only comment was that traffic study may mean different things to different people okay. and so it might be better to actually identify it the, the data that the operational people think would be useful in making that determination. Okay. I understand. Thank you. Go ahead, Matt. Yeah, unfortunately, I wasn't able to attend that committee meeting yesterday. Um, I, I heard the explanation, but I'm trying to reconcile how this ties to the prepaid and collections committee's goal. Um, Andrew was had his hand up next. I'll let him go ahead. Yeah, so the, the conversation in the meeting yesterday was uh, kind of uh, tangential to what the prepaid and collections committee was. It, it came about through a bit of uh, kind of uh, going off into left field during the conversation. So this has nothing to do with prepaid um, or collections committee. Okay. This was, um, and, and, and I can elucidate a little bit about what, what, it, what was being asked for. Um, several of us were kind of commiserating about our inability to get actionable data from Lumen about um, the number of concurrent ESINET sessions we actually need. I have been asking for about two years uh, to no avail. 
and uh, apparently I'm not the only one. And then one of the other authorities mentioned that they requested a traffic study for that purpose to get an idea of how many EziNet sessions they're actually using over the course of a year or what have you. And the report that they got back from Lumen was gobbledygook uh, and was not actually actionable. So that's where we wanted to bring that up in this meeting. And as the EziNet users group say collectively, uh, there are many of us with a desire to get an understanding of you know how many concurrent sessions we are actually using concurrently, um, what the kind of maybe 75th, 80th, 90th, 100th percentile is um, of, of usage and, uh, and get that in a timely manner uh, from Lumen. Uh, so that was, that was the, the ask. So we can, we can put a committee or group of people together to kind of put some of those together, but maybe the folks from Lumen can kind of uh, uh, let us know what is available today. And if the only option is the traffic study that I think it was Douglas County received a while back, um, then maybe we can partner with them to come up with a different way of visualizing that data. Outstanding. Thank you. Uh, Jackie, you have your hand up. Go ahead. Yeah, this is Jackie. It was Douglas County, and the traffic study was done on the old network, not on the EziNet. Um, but I would be willing to be a part of that um, group so that maybe we can take from what was given to us from the old um, camera trunk network and see what we could use or what we would want for the EZNet ne network, which may have a completely different, better traffic study. Um, but we do need this information. We do need to be able to right size our concurrent sessions per PSAP. Daryl, go ahead. And one suggestion I had on that call was because we know that CenturyLink is planning on filing another tariff for text to 911 and other purposes, that it might be um, a good idea to try to formulate an ask for CenturyLink to include in that tariff um, and bring it to either this group or bring it directly to CenturyLink. So I think an I the idea of a group of local agencies from the ESNet users group getting together to work out what exactly you want to see and it makes perfect sense in, in that context. Um, another thing that came up was whether or not ECATS could provide data that would serve the same purpose. And I simply don't know enough about the capabilities of ECATS to answer that, but it seems like that might be a possibility. So it, it might be worth um, discussing with Intrato, uh, since they're the ones who provide the ECATS product to see if they can suggest ways to um, manipulate that data or look at it through the right reports to get the kind of information that you're looking for. Okay, thanks, Daryl. Uh, I guess based on that, and uh, Andrew, uh, thank you so much for that explanation. Uh, did somebody from CenturyLink respond to uh, Andrew's um, information and his request? Maybe you can uh, provide some um, idea of what kind of information we'd be able to get. Is anybody out there? Yeah, I was just going to ask. I don't know if I still have. I was just looking in the. Jeff, are you still on? Jeff Winkleman? I am. What was the question again? I'm sorry. <clears throat> so based on what Andrew said, his explanation of what we are looking for, um, I think he was asking if CenturyLink would be able to provide some information um, on what what type of information or what information is available to us right now to be able to get a report um, the, for, for the information that we're looking for. for specifically for the use of the sessions, if, if there's too many or not enough? Yes, exactly. I'll, I'll work uh, to see what we can find out. If um, that's beyond what I'm aware of, I know back in 
the Decama days, we could do that. But now that we're on next, and I think it's going to be have coordinated effort between our NOC as well as within Toronto. So I'll see what I can find out. Okay. But, so we'll, but to the point to the point that I heard, it needs to be something that's understandable. Correct. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Apparently, the last one we got um, was not understandable. And I think that's why we want to be able to pinpoint or know what is available um, before. I mean, we can get the committee together and figure out what we want to know. Um, but then we'd also like to know what is available through CenturyLink or Lumen, you know, that we can ask for. Okay. Joe, go ahead. Perhaps it perhaps would be helpful if someone from Lumen and or Entrado sat with that committee um, because it may also be an issue of how to interpret data that's in some kind of a report you know may, maybe collaboratively it would be more helpful than um, us trying to figure out what we need and and then absolutely time. yeah it'd probably be a good idea to have somebody on that committee who can speak to that so that we're not going back and forth I'm so sure I know that, that Jackie, I was, I'm sorry, Jeff, go ahead. No, I was going to say, yeah, let us know when that is, and, and we'd be happy to be on there. I'll still put the request out to find out what type of report we can pull if there is one that, that shows the study on the SNS sessions in the interim, though. Okay. That sounds good. And I know that Jackie has offered and would like to be on that committee. Um, do we have anybody else? who would like to add another meeting. Matt, go ahead. Yeah, I'd be happy to help be on that committee if we need to, because right-sizing the amount of ESINET sessions is kind of important, and it's something that we kind of went straight with the number of camera trunks we had to the number of ESINET sessions we've had. And then we control trail over between our various PSAPs inside of our own CPE so it'd be kind of nice to see what kind of reports and metrics are available uh, on utilization, saturation, that kind of stuff to be able to tell whether things are sized appropriately. So I'd be happy to help too. Okay. And it looks like we had uh, Jeff Irvin uh, would like to be on the committee and Ashley Morgan from Thornton. Anybody else? I would. Uh, I'm sorry, this, who was that? This is, sorry, this is Andrew. Oh, Darwin. okay. And Andrew. Joe, go ahead. I just could, I think in the meeting yesterday, Daryl pointed it out that um, whatever data we get, it may be interpreted, different authorities may want to have different numbers of sessions based upon their tolerance for uh, rollovers and transfers and types of things. I don't recall exactly what Daryl said, but I think that's also something we need to keep in mind is that um, it's it's not going to be a hard and fast rule for everybody. It's it's going to be information to help them decide. Is that right, Daryl? He had to jump for another meeting, sorry. But that's about what he said, yeah. Jackie, you raised your hand. No, I did. I love the way you put that at another meeting. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm wondering if uh, Lumen and the person who would work with us could set up the meetings um, so that we can drill into this. Anybody so, from Lumen want to take a lead on that? I'm happy to set up the meetings for you guys. Um, I just need to confirm the list of who on both sides wants to be invited. And we can do that now, or if someone could email it to me or throw it in the chat, I, I'm happy to schedule the meetings. And Tracy, would you be able to have somebody there that could talk to us about what's available and so that we can make intelligent decisions on what we actually need? <laughs> I hope so. Yes, I pull the right folks in on our site. I'll work with Jeff and Kevin on that. Okay. 
Okay, to make Jeff it. Said he to, would participate. Yeah, yeah, we've got Jeff. Um, sorry, I was just looking at something in the chat. Uh, Jeff Irvin, Ashley Morgan, Matt Toll, Andrew. Um, it might be good. Do you think if they just all emailed you, Tracy, and then you had their email? That would help me a lot. Okay. <laughs> My email is in the chat. Um, it's more towards the beginning. I can pop it in again if you want. But yeah, if you guys could just shoot me an email. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm not uh, the one that will be able to answer most of the questions from the Luna side, but I'll get the right people on that can. Okay. So those that were interested, just go ahead and uh, email Tracy. And she can get that all set up. All right, any other discussion on that for right now? I see Jeff had to drop off. Matt, I saw your uh, your message. So we'll have a, I'll open that up for you in just a second. Um, I'm gonna move on then. I know we're a little bit past 11 o'clock. Um, I had to add the uh, vice chair position. Uh, Danette Martin was the vice chair and luckily for her, she retired. <laughs> so um, we are looking for, we'll need another, uh, a new vice chair for um, this committee. And so I'm just going to, Jennifer, I think it's all right if I just ask while we're in this meeting, is that correct? Yeah, the ESINET users group has its own charter separate from the task force bylaws. So what we're looking at here is the charter that says, in the event of a midterm vacancy, the voting members of the users group shall at their next meeting vote to appoint a replacement for that officer who shall then fulfill the remainder of the officer's term. So yes, you can ask for volunteers and the voting members may vote. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do need to ask for a volunteer for somebody to take on the vice chair um, position for this group. It's not that bad, you guys. Who's already logged off that you can nominate? Who can I nominate? Who's already logged off of the call? Oh. Nobody that I know from the voting members, which are uh, representatives from PSAPs. I like what you're thinking, Joe, though. That's pretty funny. Well, we got a lot of people on. And just so you know, the vice chair would step in like what happened today when I had people show up at my house earlier than expected and I needed to move. Um, or if I, you know, would not be able to be at a meeting, you would run the meeting. Um, we are towards the end of the year and it should be changing next year. So you're looking at September, October, November, December to be the vice chair. I'm going to nominate somebody if somebody doesn't say anything. All right, I'm going to pick on you, Brett. Are you interested in being the vice chair? not coming off mute Me, Brett? yeah you <laughs> you brett uh yeah i could do it for through this year thank you all right so we have one volunteer yes hands clapping <laughs> Somehow I'll, I'll ask for anybody else, but I have a feeling that it's going to be crickets. So 
Um, I think we can just do the vote. We can use thumbs up or you can put it in chat for the voting members as everybody, um, it's everybody's vote for Bet, uh, Brett to be the vice chair for the remainder of the 2024 year. Thumbs up, thumbs up. I think you got it, Brett. You guys are so generous. <laughs> I hear a train horn. Somebody just got railroaded. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Brett. No, thank you, Brett. I appreciate it. Sure. Um, yeah. I guess, Kathy, let's... Uh, We'll, we'll talk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get it lined out. Yeah. We'll talk. It's, it's, it, it's not, it, it'll be good. So, okay. but I'll, I'll reach out to you. Sounds good. Thanks. Okay. All right. I think the next thing we have, uh, Matt has something that he wants to bring, not on the agenda, but I'm adding it right now. With apologies for making, a long meeting longer um, and we'll try to keep this very short but it it's kind of important about three weeks ago alex discovered an unauthorized change to one of our msag wireline ranges so he did some research and this change was not made by us so it didn't show up in any of our msag maintenance account histories, right? Your change request histories. So he had to do some stare and compare analysis and discovered 16 more unauthorized changes to our MSAG. So we had some conversations by email with CenturyLink and Entrado folks. Um, you know, we're pretty unhappy, but the explanation was reasonable and Entrado says they've made changes to their procedures on this. Um, okay, fair enough. So my last email ended with a question of, did this policy result in unauthorized changes to anyone else's MSAGs in Colorado? That was two weeks ago. There's been no answer. So I bring it up here. I would recommend that everyone look through the history of their MSAG changes in the last three to six months and see if there are any that have recent dates that you did not make. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Uh, Joe, go ahead. You know, I asked what the explanation was of how this happened. It was tied to a, a company or sister corporation called Brightspeed and how they had been handling addressing notifications by local governments. Those were being passed over to Entrado and Entrado was updating our MSAG without our permission for those notifications. And uh, it, it's somehow related to the, the the fact that bright speed is separating service from i think it's from CenturyLink in some fashion and so there was some sort of miscommunication or misunderstanding about those local government addressing notification emails qualifying as authorization to to edit our msec so bright speed's going away there's going to be a new email address coming forth soon when that all gets finalized. This is a multi-state thing with bright speed. Um, so that information, you know, it, it, there'll be a new email address for, for the new recipient for addressing notifications. Um, but in the meantime, uh, we've been waiting two weeks for an answer from CenturyLink and Entrado about whether or not we were the only ones affected because it sounded like it was a general policy that could have affected all of us. It seems like Entrado should have a record of the changes they made and the changes that were authorized by the, uh, requested by the ESAPs or governing bodies, so they should be able to actually provide the answer. 
yeah, we had thoughts along similar lines. Um, it, it's actually a pretty narrow set of people involved. And I, I think the people involved would know if they did this to more than just our MSA. Cindy Berry just put um, something in the chat saying, we will follow up with Entrado for the MSEG audit. Bright speech should not be touching anything in Colorado. Um, they acquired previous Century Lake territories in other states. Cynthia, if you need to see the email thread that included um, Cindy Rowland and some other folks, we can we can provide that to you so you have the history of it. Should the user group make a request for that information about whether other Colorado jurisdictions had MSAG changes made without their consent? I think it would be reasonable to first let the, the CenturyLink staff on this call follow up. If they sufficiently get to the bottom of this, then um, maybe we don't need to, to escalate that way, but it's certainly something to keep in mind. Tracy, go ahead. Hey, Matt, if you wouldn't mind sending that email to Cindy and I, um, she doesn't have her voice working on this one. So um, if you could forward that to us, I, I work with Cindy Rowland on a lot of projects and I'll get in touch with her today. Okay, thank you. Yep. In the meantime, if, if you, to, to the ESINET, the, the um, PSAPs and authorities, if you're curious about this, um, do look back at the, the history of all uh, MSAG edits and compare those to the ones you yourselves have initiated. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Matt. Appreciate mm -hmm. you bringing that forward. Anybody else have any questions on that? OK. Um, going to move forward uh, to the strategic plan update. Um, there really, there's not much to say right now. We've still continued to go through the document. We are meeting tomorrow as our next uh, strategic plan meeting. And I think tomorrow what we will start doing is looking at um, what we want to have for our goals. Um, so that's where that is right now. Um, not much of an update, but it is moving forward. Um, the document does look good. Uh, we're getting through there. And I think once we're done, um, it's going to be a, a really good uh, document that depicts exactly what um, Colorado is looking to move with, with uh, NG911 and other areas. Any questions on the strategic plan? Okay, next we have public comment. Any non-voting members welcome to provide comments? Do we have any non-voting members with anything to add to the meeting? Go ahead, Michael. Uh, regarding the uh, system performance reports from the beginning of the meeting, is there any opportunity or capability to get similar reports on a per PSAP or per authority level so that you know things like Archuleta, things like the the one-offs would be identified, could be known and not averaged in statewide. Tracy, can you talk to that, speak to that? Can you say that one more time? I was still make notes on my upcoming meeting for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think Michael was uh, asking if there was any way to get uh, similar reports like what you show um, in the beginning of the meeting, uh, but for at a authority or agency level. Is that correct, Michael? Correct. Okay. I can I can check. Um, I I do know that I mean this isn't an in product. This is not a Lumen tool that we pull this data from. So we would probably have to put in some sort of request for new reporting, and I'm not quite sure how that works. Okay, well, if you can follow up with that and then let us know, that would be great. Yep. I'll put that as a, a follow-up for next month. So you want the same data only at the authority or agency level? 
I, I'm guessing some of that data wouldn't really apply on a per agency or authority level, but something of that nature where you could see the the quality of service, the any kind of disruptions, packet losses at a more local level. Okay. I'll see what I can find out. Or a PSAP level. Yeah, at the PSAP level, that's going to kind of tie into what I was going to check on for um, Daryl, right, to see if we can drill down a little closer to that Arapahoe County um, issue that we had. Um, my, in my mind, that would be more at a PSAP level. So let me see, number one, if we can change those reports. Um, I don't know if we can, if there's a timeline associated with that. Um, also don't know if there's any fees associated with that, but I can definitely get you an update before the next meeting. Sounds good. Thanks, Tracy. Of course. Any other uh, non-voting members with uh, comments or questions? All right, hearing none, it is 11.17. I apologize that we went 17 minutes over, uh, but I'm going to call this meeting as adjourned. A uh, special thank you to Brett for volunteering to be the vice chair. So we will talk to you guys all next month. Thank you so much. Take care, Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Bye -bye.